Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Yep, this is my first video of a happy new year and decade 2020 or 2020. That's, I just can't wait to continue to do some more if I can. I mean, I was a little worried about what's going on with YouTube lately with this COPA law that was going around. Um, apparently I am safe for now. I'm just hoping that this is not going to go on, but if this does happen, well, that's where I have my BitChute channel. But I don't want to lose my YouTube channel. I mean, I, I want to continue to post videos and spend more time, have some fun, you know, no matter what happens. So, you know how it is. I mean, I love to do movie reviews and special reviews and even post commercial breaks or, or any of this other stuff that I love all this random stuff to make this channel more special because I only have like over 700 videos I'm nearly 800 this close so I want to continue and plus you know I have a lot of friends on YouTube as well and, and I hope they'll stay long forever no matter what but you know because we have to struggle a lot with all these laws and you know, spreading around well anyway but to start the new year and decade, um, because I just been like, you know, having a nice uh, dinner with the family, you know, while celebrating the New Year's and, you know, just taking a break, you know, just watching some movies and TV shows and all, and going on the internet like, you know, YouTube, you know, Facebook, and all these other websites I love to explore and you know have fun watching videos. You know how I do it. Well, I, I thought about reviewing um, for its first video of, of this particular uh, year and decade, a Peanuts special review. And not only that, but this is a dedication to the late, great, um, longtime producer, Lee Mendelson. Uh, for those who don't know, I mean, he's been producing all of these Peanuts specials and movies ever since uh, the 60s. You know, when he approached, um, you know, Peanuts creator uh, Charles M. Schultz, a.k.a. Sparky, <laughs> because um, he loved um, his work, you know, when, when he was working at uh, KPIX-TV, a CBS affiliate in San Francisco. Yeah, because uh, since he's a San Francisco native, um, he started out doing uh, public service announcements. Um, such as the, and also worked on some documentaries, uh, such as uh, The Innocent Fair, which uh, shows a topic on San Francisco's World Fair in, in 1915. Yeah, which eventually he won a Peabody's Award for that, for his achievement. Uh, but then he left the station and went on to form his own production company, and that's where he worked on his first. Uh, documentary um, called um, A Man Named Mays, you know, focusing on Willie Mays, who happens to be a a baseball player nicknamed the Say Hey Kid. Um, that became one of the biggest experience to actually uh, approach uh, Charles M. Schultz to do um, a documentary because he also came across which involves uh, Charlie Brown's baseball team. You know, like if he actually had done a documentary on the world's greatest baseball player, why not uh, do <laughs> a documentary on Char on the worst baseball player, and that is, of course, Charlie Brown. But as a result of that, um, he produced um, a, uh, a Peanuts, his first uh, Peanuts documentary called Charlie Brown and Charles Schultz. So this was the beginning of a 30-year collaboration with him um, until his death uh, for Schultz. And interesting enough, though, this is going to be celebrating its 20th its 20 anniversary of Charles M. Schultz's death since February. What a start here for the year. But he will always be remembered. And... And if it wasn't for him, though, I mean, we would never have any of the specials such as A Charlie Brown Christmas, which is the first one we ever got that was approached by the Coca-Cola Company because they, 
they were very interested in producing a Christmas special, you know, for for all kids and families alike to watch, you know, which bring in millions of viewers. I mean, at first they thought, well, it's not going to work out because, well, for one thing, not many people have uh, had even read the comic strips, but then again, a lot of people have because, you know, they, they read them directly through uh, newspapers and and other uh, magazines and stuff and they love it so much they thought maybe this could work well for a TV series and that's how it began at first uh, for the first reactions though it's like it didn't turn out so great because they were afraid that you know this might become a failure but eventually it brought in so many viewers um, they love it so much that eventually that's when they continue to go on doing some more TV specials and then later they did their first movie which was of course a boy named Charlie Brown and that became popular enough to actually span some sequels to follow I mean which is only uh, free sequels um, for the course of of 1972 through 1980 well that is until 2015 when we got the Peanuts movie the first CGI animated feature that was done by Blue Sky and distributor Fox. So, so yeah, I mean, it's been like a lifetime for CBS to release all these primetime specials. I mean, earning more Emmys and Peabody Awards and all of that. So yeah, and, and he won these Emmy Awards for, for producing them, and it's it's special for him to actually continue to go on for that period and also work on you know the TV series the Charlie Brown Snoopy show for a Saturday morning block and all of it so, so yeah he will always be remembered and I just said that you know after all this time you know he if it wasn't for Mendelssohn we would never have all these peanut specials and movies altogether. I would never be reviewing them at all. Yeah, exactly. But I became a huge Charlie Brown fan, as well as Snoopy, ever since I was a little kid. But if you ask me, it was my family that introduced me to them. Yeah. So. Anyway, he will be missed. But he'll always be remembered. Okay, so I'm going to start with my Peanuts review, and I'm sorry I had to take a little long, but I had to explain. And it's going to be, it's Magic Charlie Brown. And this is another special that I really love, and definitely another favorite too. It's about um, Snoopy becoming a magician who was about to perform his magic show. Until suddenly he turned Charlie Brown invisible, and that led to... A lot of problems because you know after it started raining well Snoopy actually had trouble trying to um, make uh, Charlie Brown reappear again as normal as he could. It stars Michael Mandy as Charlie Brown, Cindy Penny as Lucy Van Pelt, Cindy Wiley as Sally Brown, Charlie Brown's sister of course, Earl Riley as Linus Van Pelt and Franklin, Brent Howell as Pepper and Patty, Shannon Kahn and Casey Carlson as Marcy. Yeah, we got two voice actresses to, to provide the voice. Christopher Donahon as Schroeder, and Bill Melendez as Snoopy and Woodstock. And we got to remember, it's executive producer Lee Mendelson along with Bill Melendez. Created by Charles M. Schultz, of course, and based on this comic strip, and it's directed by Phil Wellman. The special begins when Charlie Brown was feeding Snoopy and wanted him to educate himself instead of uh, spending time, you know, eating and sleeping at his doghouse. So he gave him a library card to check out a few books, so that way he'll be able to learn and explore. So when Snoopy went to the library, he checked out one book, and that turned out to be 
a magic book, you know, how to perform magic. So after he started weeding, you know, he decided to join in with uh, Woodstock uh, to perform under his stage name, uh, the Great Houndini, because he's going to prepare for an influence to to actually start a magic show for everyone to join and be able to watch, you know, how he does all his magic tricks. So with several practices and just having fun, you know, cutting all that the the racket noises, Charlie Brown informs him to to cut it out because it's going to annoy uh, the neighbor next door. He also has the cat, yeah, a giant cat who goes around clawing Snoopy and Woodstock, you know, especially with his doghouse. Yeah, that was really, <laughs> really messed up. So, because he was performing the magic really loud. Anyway, uh, the following day, or perhaps uh, whatever day of the whatever day of the week it is. Um, he actually recruits Marcy as the host to, to perform his Bodderville act, which is, of course, uh, the magic show that he's going to invite the entire audience to see. So anyway, Marcy, of course, is working as the assistant and the announcer, with Sally uh, joining in as his silent assistant. So in the show, he pulls a rabbit out of his hat, of course, which reveals um, Woodstock, and that's where we have a heckler, a, a, a really dumb heckler, goes around calling him fake, fake, that's no rabbit, fake, fake, we want our money back. So, of course, Snoopy has to go around, take out the the magic top hat and just, <laughs> and just uh, pop his head. And then his next uh, trick is um, the wings, you know, where he was, uh, try to, he was trying to connect it together and be able to pull it out, but it got stuck. So the heckler continues to tell him it's fake. He can't even pull apart. So then finally he takes the rings and just slams it straight into his face. Yeah, he really deserved it too. And yeah, he started sniffing too, like he was ready to cry. Um, just trying to shut him up. Anyway, the third trick, this time we have the first volunteer, and that was Franklin, to join in the stick in the hole trick. Um, which <laughs> didn't turn out so well, because when he tries to put the stick in the hole, you know, it actually hurts uh, Franklin. So yeah, he popped up. And then next, it's the amputation decapitation trick, uh, which that's the second uh, volunteer for Pepper and Patty, which was pretty interesting too to actually see what Pepper and Patty looks like when, when his head, yeah, when her head and her body is all, <laughs> all uh, cut apart. You know, they're not exactly, <laughs> particularly right. You know, <laughs> like you can see. Uh, yeah, you can see Pepper and Patty's head in the middle, uh, with uh, her body on on top and and her feet and legs on on her bottom. <laughs> so yeah, so that's when Snoopy had to put um, these two um, these two knives inside the inside this huge box. Yeah, and I know Pepper and Patty's like screaming, "Hey, get me out! Hey, get me out!" Get me out of this thing. So, uh, the next one, um, that's where um, Snoopy decided to cut uh, Linus's uh, security blanket into strips. So, that way he'll be able to put them inside uh, the magic uh, top hat and hoping that it'll reappear as normal as it can. But unfortunately, it became an instant fail. And yeah, that's. That's where Linus uh, fainted. Now we had the levitation trick. Um, Lucy volunteered, and it actually worked. Um, surprisingly, it, it actually he actually did know what he was doing. I mean, he took out the rain to see how it it actually appeared. So you see, you know, Lucy floating up in the air, you know, all covered with the sheets. Um, but unfortunately, by the last act, at the end of the trick, I mean, yeah, he, 
Lucy uh, fell down on the ground uh, along with the sheet. <laughs> so that was funny. Um, but the most uh, biggest uh, volunteer of them all was when, which I did this way, Lucy asked Charlie Brown to volunteer. And yeah, where he said me to actually have um, Snoopy uh, perform an invisible trick. So that means Charlie Brown will wind up becoming invisible, all disappear. But then suddenly a rainstorm appears, so the rest of the audience had to leave. So Charlie Brown is the only one that's all alone, all invisible, and somehow he's, you know, he's walking around trying to go all the way back to his house. And that's where, you know, because Sally was there too, she was just watching TV. And then she began to find out that yes, um, Charlie Brown is gone, but he can ex she can actually hear his voice. So he was just doing some, you know, some testing by telling them to do the, the all this uh, facial noises like this, or just stomp on your feet, or then t say the word rats, or I can't stand it. So now he recognized uh, <laughs> that it was Charlie Brown all this time, but then yes, he's saying to himself that. He's going to be a lost soul. And yeah, Sally wants uh, Charlie Brown's his room. So he's like, if you're a lost soul, can I have your room? <laughs> well, there you go. Meanwhile, uh, Charlie Brown was ready to feed Snoopy. And by the time uh, he, he got out, that's when Snoopy was very shocked to find out that, <laughs> that you can only see um, the supper dish uh, appearing. <laughs> And that's where he ex explained to him that you're the one that made me invisible. And I wonder if you're going to find a way to make me visible again. So apparently he doesn't know how to use uh, the trick to to actually make him visible. So what he does is very simple. Uh, first he decided to take out um, a bucket of soap and water. Um, that didn't do any good because, of course, he's all wet. And then next thing you know, he took out a bucket, dig up some some dirt and soil, put some water to make it into um, just to make it into mud, and you know he covered uh, Charlie Brown with mud to make him feel like a chocolate chip cookie, and tries to dry him up with a a blow dryer, but apparently he fell apart. So I guess the only thing that he can do was actually taking out. A sheet and you know cutting out all the holes of the eyes to make him look almost like a ghost yeah takes out a red tie and then put some um, some boots on so that way he'll walk around you know <laughs> Sally was already shocked and scared when he found out and then and then, then Charlie Brown went straight to the bathroom to find out what he looks like and yeah <laughs> he fainted um, so, uh, well, next thing you know, um, Charlie Brown just got out of the house because, you know, Snoopy and, and Woodstock just left, uh, but suddenly, and this is the big part of a all, was that Charlie Brown all of a sudden went straight, um, to Lucy to actually kick the football, and yes, this is the first special where we actually get to see Charlie Brown kicking the football out of Lucy's hands, you know, because she's always teeing the ball and always pulling it away. You know, he goes all the way up in the air, lands flat on his back, and kills himself. So this is the first time he gets to trick uh, Lucy on k by kicking the ball, you know, taking the ball away from her and, you know, <laughs> you know, just you know, just going around continuing kicking, so that way you know she doesn't pull it away. So, so it's almost like you know Lucy didn't even notice until she found out. So that's fun. So then Lucy uh, took out the magic book um, to Snoopy and telling him to to make Charlie Brown visible again, because if you don't, I'll pound you. So he went down to his doghouse, uh, which amazing enough you get to see the inside of what his doghouse looked like where he has um, 
all of his uh, laboratory stuff that he got, you know, with all these beakers and everything. And he's dressed up as the Great Aldini. He was trying to uh, find some instructions on how to uh, make um, Charlie Brown visible, but yeah, that wasn't working out because he causes, you know, a big explosion when he was trying to mix in the, the magic potion for all these beakers uh, together, but it just, hoping this would work, but it just causes the entire uh, <laughs> beakers and all that into a huge explosion completely for his doghouse. So. That didn't work out, but then he wants up reading the book to find out how to um, make him not invisible again by actually uh, practicing. So he used uh, Woodstock to, uh, as a test to see if this will work. I mean, first he, he uses the counter spell on him by, by actually making Woodstock's head bigger and then, then back to smaller, then make his feet bigger, then make it back to smaller, until finally he made the, the one trick that will actually make him um, invisible and then and reappear. So it worked. So this is exactly the one that he is about to use. Yeah, and, and of course Woodstock kicked him in the butt. <laughs> so now he came over hoping to find Charlie Brown where he's at. I mean, you started hearing uh, Charlie Brown breathing. I mean, he's already panting after running so fast. After, <laughs> you know, trying to kick uh, the football away and pulling it away from, from Lucy. So he was hoping that this was his challenge to actually continue. Uh, but when um, Snoopy finally came along, just using the counter spell, he finally put it on to Charlie Brown just as he ran as fast as he can, ready to kick the football away from Lucy. Uh, yeah, and it's in slow motion, though. And then when he finally uh, got to kick it, unfortunately, yes, it turns out, as we saw it in any of these specials and movies, yeah, he went all the way up in the air, land flat on his back, and, well, he finally came back. So, that's when uh, Charlie Brown actually told uh, Lucy that, yes, I did it. I actually kicked the football. But Lucy thought this was a false statement because no one will actually believe you that you actually did kick the football away from you. No, because I actually pulled the ball away from you when you ran up, down, and kick it. But, but then he told uh, Lucy that Snoopy knows that I did it. It made it possible. But then, of course, Lucy told him that you couldn't make anyone disappear out of a paper bag. Well, that's when Snoopy got so upset that he decided to use his counter spell to actually uh, take uh, Lucy all the, all the way up on the air. And that's when she started flowing. And, yeah, <laughs> and that's when both... Uh, Charlie Brown and Snoopy were all laughing together and they <laughs> and they ran off which then lead to the credits where then the yeah Lucy was still floating up in the air and then Linus came over you know took his blanket which apparently his blanket uh, I think this might be a new blanket that he got well I mean I guess we never explained that uh, was that he took uh, Lucy all the way down so now he <laughs> So now Lucy stays um, down to the ground, <laughs> already upset because of what happened. So <laughs> there you go. Um, so it really is a fun special. I really enjoy it. I, you know, I love the the moments that that uh, Snoopy had done when he was doing all these magic tricks and and all that stuff, and then all the moments of Charlie Brown, you know, pulling the football away from Lucy, you know, after you know teasing him a lot. And, you know, this was the first special where he actually does get to kick the football. I mean, even though, you know, he was invisible. I mean, I guess if he wasn't invisible, it would be possible. But you know how Lucy is with, with her tricks. And um, I guess for for the most of the magic tricks that uh, Snoopy has done, I mean, he did a great job. Although, yes, there were some mistakes that he's done. But I guess you could say that, well, more narrowly, he's a pretty average magician. <laughs> but it was fun. Um, so I, I always love this episode. Apparently, though, because um, I guess I'm going to be name-dropping here, 
Uh, but Doug Walker, a.k.a. the Stodger Critic, didn't like this special at all. He says this was his least favorite. You know, when he was reviewing the, the Peanuts movie back in 2015, I'm like, are you kidding me? I, I'm surprised you didn't mention um, It's Your First Kiss, Charlie Brown, to be your least favorite, or, or even that uh, live-action special that aired on NBC um, a long time ago. Um which is about, you know, the Snoopy Dow. I'm surprised he didn't say that, or even explain that. I don't think he ever watched that one. <laughs> but, really? I mean, I, I know it's his opinion, but I, I just don't get it. I mean, I mean, I respect his opinions several times, but, but it seems like he just goes a bit too far. To, uh, I mean, granted, I did lost respect for Doug Walker, a.k.a. Nostalgia Critic. I mean, especially... You know his later uh, videos that he's been doing for the past couple years, and I mean, especially with the uh, with the controversy that was going around at uh, Channel Awesome. Yeah, that happened in 2018. Uh, what happened in the past? Uh, and I already, I already heard that you know he did one of his worst reviews uh, in the history of, of bad reviews. And that was, of course, for the movie Pink Floyd's The Wall. I've heard about this. I, I did not watch it. And I, I refuse to watch it because I know this is exactly what he loves to do. He loves to trash a good movie and just throw in all these annoying skits. That's all he ever focuses on is, is annoying, unfunny skits. Like he thinks he's on Saturday Night Live or something. I mean, why, why won't he just admit it, man? He's not a movie buff. He's just he's just playing the character of of him just being yeah an intelligent moron. That's all he is. I feel like a fool having to deal with this guy. And I I will never forgive him after his review of Good Burger. Never forgive him for that. And I also will never forgive him for all the other reviews he's done, especially uh, Percy Jackson and The Lightning Thief. Yes, I've heard that he reviewed that movie. I mean, he's full of crap. Really is, man. Now I know why James Wolfe is a lot better now. I should have realized that too from the beginning. That he's totally full of himself. I mean, okay, I know, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, enough with the ranting on, on him. I, I know he's, you know, he's still doing videos. I'm so surprised that he's still doing them after all the controversy he's been going through. I mean, he made some pretty bad films, too, with his friends, so, what do you expect? Yeah, I, I didn't expect this video to go on for that, but, okay. Yeah, well, hey, at least I don't go around doing crazy stuff that he does. <laughs> okay, okay, I want, let, let, let's, let's, uh, get right to it. Um, but I, I love the special, it's fun, it's hilarious, um, a lot of great moments here and there. And I'll definitely thank uh, Lee Mendelson for all the specials he's done. And he'll always be remembered. And, you know, I, I love the, the music that they use, uh, done, of course, by Ed Bogus and Judy Munson. So, I mean, of course, uh, some great tunes that they put in. And... I know that they actually put this on the It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown DVD, um, also Blu-ray, even though it wasn't really meant to be, you know, a Halloween special or anything. But no, it's just part of the uh, the, the performance that they had to put in. So it's just just an extra, but that's nice. Um. <laughs> um, also to note that they did the production all the way at Marvel Productions. Hard to believe. Yes, uh, they actually did work on the, the production values for, for this special uh, through Marvel. Yes, uh, which at the time, Marvel Productions was owned by New World uh, Pictures. Yeah, because New World did bought uh, Marvel Entertainment. Yeah, because uh, it was part of it at the time. You know, before they, they moved on to other companies, you know, to buy them out you know, after their bankruptcy. You know, of course, like Fox, which is News Corporation, and, and now, of course, Disney, 
which happened to buy, you know, Fox and Lucasfilm Limited and all. So, yeah. So that that's um, that's an interesting note here. Um, but anyway, it's fun, it's hilarious, it's excellent, and I recommend it. So that's it's Magic Charlie Brown, and I give the special five stars. I'm Joseph Vesabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.